Welcome to The Shooting Show. This week we follow Chris Dalton on a late season robot hunt. Yeah, this week we're uh, we're back down in Ayrshire after a, uh, we've been on the up at Kinnaird on the estate on sort of early stags for the previous uh, shows. Nice to be back home again. Uh, at this stage in the season where we're coming, we're rapidly approaching the doe season, the hind season. Um, I like to get out locally. The, the, it was quite a late harvest this year. Um, late drilling because of the wet spring um, so they've only really been cut in the last kind of two or three weeks so it's nice to get around once all the harvest's in and it gives me a good opportunity just to see how the deer have fared i can look at retention rates just confirm everything my early plans on sort of cull strategy if you like for the year ahead so it allows me just to uh, you know just to confirm that what i thought in terms of deer numbers is correct sometimes there are surprises um, and also at this time of year, around here in Ayrshire, what a lot of the guys do, the farmers do, is that when they've cut the, the, uh, the, the, the crop, and that's maybe going for a, for a rotation to a different crop the following year, they'll undersow with stubble turnips, and they'll put the sheep on those, kind of December, January, February. Um, and that's a real draw into the deer, and that's the case on one of the farms I look after, where there's a, there's a field of stubble turnips that have emerged, um, and it's actually been quite a draw to the deer. So the, uh, the, the farmer friend of mine mentioned to me the other day, just go and have a look down there. So we started killing two birds with one stone. We're going to have a look at that. We're going to have a look at where we are on deer numbers. And also it's a good time to keep an eye on the fox situation because often early in the morning, you'll get a fox or two sneaking around. So it gives it a chance to sort of multitask if you like. Um, so that was the plan. We did see a fox actually. Unfortunately, it was really late. The light, it was a sort of a cloudy morning and it probably held the light back about 20 minutes. So we were actually ages. We got down to the side of a, a field, a stubble field and got into a little hollow, nice position, rifle or bench rest on a mound in front of us, just waiting. And there's always deer in that field or nearly always. And I could see some deer just pick them up with the binoculars. It was a bit early to get them on camera, I think. And a fox came tripping across um, diagonally across really in towards our position but it's just too it was I just couldn't see it properly to shoot it um, and, it, and it wasn't for waiting any it was kind of going from A to B you could clearly see where the uh, run is where it's using uh, the, a, a gap in the stop fence to get under the um, under the wire so we let that go well we didn't let that go we had no choice but to let it go I would have shot it if I'd have had the chance
Um, so the cool book we actually shot, uh, a nice little book, um, just across the sort of central part of the stubble field, I was able to make my way along the edge of the pond. Um, There's quite a lot of vegetation there, so I could use that as cover. Wind was a bit tricky, but we just had enough lateral wind to, to work with. Got on the bipod and actually um, actually shot the book, which as soon as he shot it, made about a 20 yard dash and then just dropped dead. The, the shot was actually bang on the money. Um, it was rather unfortunate really, because it was mid P. So you'll actually see the book just start to squat. Um, I probably should have waited and let him finish, but anyway, there you go, it is what it is. Um, so he didn't actually get finished, finished chance to finish his P before he actually ended up being um, on the grass in the stubble sort of 20 yards further on. Um, so I think you'll see all that quite nicely on the, on the package. Dead, 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 dead. Good girl, dead. Good girl. Okay, we've got a nice, uh, this bit of a story with this book actually, it's, um, it's eluded us for quite a while, um, just been lucky, always been not in a place where we could shoot it or the winds whizzed around on us and I think I've been down here for probably three, four, maybe even five times just to try and get this book. Um, the first time I saw him I left him, I didn't, I wasn't any particular re need to shoot him at that time of year, early season and then we've, as we've come down quite a high crop of wheat here. Um, he's always managed, I say he's always managed to evade us, but anyway, we caught up with him in the end. Um, quite a long shot from the edge of the pond there. But, good animal to take off the off the ground. There's a couple of nice books in here which have left, but he's the one I was concentrating on. Anyway, finally, uh, his luck has run out on him today. Really good condition. A lot, a lot of weight on the saddle there. So what we'll do is we'll We'll get a sample off him for the for the tick survey. I'll get some gloves on and we'll go and grallock him in a minute. Not many ticks on him at all, but we'll find a few in there. And then they can go off down to the Public Health England for another sample. So we'll find a, a spot to grallock. Might have to hang him on the hedge again. And, uh, and we'll have a look at him inside. The, uh, again, just a, a little bit of explanation, the, the Gralloc, um, we, we filmed a little bit of that because people keep asking me to do to do sections of Gralloc as I do it, but one of the things we're still doing is we're sampling uh, blood and tick for um, Public Health England, goes down to Port and Down, Port and Down. So basically I'm just taking a blood sample out of the deer, a tick, um, one of the ticks off the deer, and then the two go down together with some details about where the deer was shot, condition, etc. for uh, the study that, uh, that, that Public Health England are doing into essentially diseases that uh, ticks transmit and, and the interaction between blood, ticks and deer time of year, etc, etc. So it's quite, it's quite good to be involved in that. We've sent a lot of samples down now, so we'll continue to do that. And that uh, survey is running through till I think March of next year. Yeah. Okay, I think uh, in the absence of uh, a fence that's got any height to it or a decent top straining wire, we're gonna use the um, we use the legs off the of a ladder section off the high seat, so I'm going to do a suspended growl up but I want to get a kit all ready for the um, for the survey. I tend to use the plastic bag for when I bleed the deer now to catch the blood. I found that's the easiest way of doing it, and then I can suck the blood into the syringe, the file from the from the bag. That seems to be the method that works for me best. I can get the sample straight in the post this morning and, and, and get them off. They actually very kindly provide me with a set of gloves for each sample. These are really good gloves actually. Um, 
better than the normal ones we're using so I might have to look at getting some of these keep doing a little bit of the Gralic on film because everybody's always const constantly at me to say look keep doing it we we want to see it so I'll keep doing little bits again suspended Gralic we're going to hang it off the ladder makes it a lot easier for yourself if you hock the deer first of all get it up in the air gravity take its course and then you can can drain down you can see the secondary knuckle there Or knee joint, should I say, a knuckle. And it's just ever so easy, it's really sweet. Just get it right, you can hear it's a crisp break. Not cutting the bone, just cutting the fur. And then dislocate. Always have your equipment to hand. You can use that to keep your knife clean. It might work. Generally try and get one hook in first while I'm supporting the deer because there's quite a lot of weight in that. Nicely. So basically, take the opportunity just to examine your deer now. There are a few ticks, very few, around the groin area. So we'll get one of those off. The, the area most people seem to struggle a bit with is, 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 is getting through the, 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 the pelvic bone without rupturing the, the bladder. So it's, it's, a, it's a relatively easy process. What I'm doing is I'm using the a penis in the case of a book or udder if a doe and I'm just carefully stripping back and skinning it if you like up through the groin area and I take that right back and push that out of the way so I've left everything intact there and then there's um, clearly you just cut down through the through the, uh, the pelvic bone the H bone just at the side of the urethra and that exposes where my bone cut my bone saw will cut along that line that I've just exposed and I will cut through that bone which will then open up the, the pelvic area I can spread the legs a little bit wider give myself a gap about the diameter of the of the end belief here about that thickness and then I can put my fingers round and just ease round ease it up and then a little v-neck there and lift all that forward and it will just come forward of the body cavity so any contamination any urine or pellets will be dropping down onto the floor so it's a perfectly clean and hygienic process and and as soon as i'm starting this process the 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 cooling process is starting because the air is now coming out of the carcass so it's actually starting to cool you can open that right up and then hold that back and start to do this bit next or you can go and and, and clean this bit out first it's entirely up to you whichever you prefer my inclination is to finish this cut down to the top of the sternum I hold the intestines with my hand I'll get my bone saw handy I'll extend that cut down the rib cage I use the bone saw to cut the uh, chest cavity open down the sternum and then I'll let everything fall out so the intestines and everything will be down in about this area which will clear that area out for me to work in so I've got more of a working area to work around the pelvic area with all the intestines out of the way and I'm not in the risk of kind of nicking anything up in this area so we'll get the, the good old bone saw to hand and basically what I'm doing is holding in the intestine you're looking at those in a, shortly for your examination anyway for the 
mesenteric lymph node chain so I'm keeping that out of my way and then now I've got to the top of the sternum just extend that cut right down to the bleed hole you see some of the bullet damage there and then keeping the intestines out of the way cut through that I'm now into the chest cavity damage there from the bullet let's go down the side of that now and then as I was saying now basically what's happened now is everything's kind of falling out of the way I can get at the kidneys I'll have a look at these while we're here take those out Zosha will be waiting anyway expect at this time of year I mean that book will have been rutting although it's a young book so a little bit of fat on there but not a lot but you can clearly see they're in they're in good condition um, I've got somebody here that quite likes kidneys for breakfast it's got no table manners whatsoever though. So now what I can do, slightly awkward with this piece of wood here, normally I'd be on a tree um, making my cut a little bit difficult so I may have to lift the carcass forward a little bit just to just to get that cut with the, with the uh, saw through that area. Just slight pressure, you don't want to push right through and go and punch, punch or anything. And you hear that go, so now I'm through. So that effectively that's me finished with the bone saw. But what I was saying is about this point is where you want to really get the, if it will work, is get the legs as far apart as you can, just to give you room to I'll cheat a little bit there. Now that's what I want, a big gap there. So it's about the diameter of the Ventari blade. And just easing around the back of that you can actually do a lot of this with your finger so basically it's not a full bladder here but you could be presented with a full bladder so you have to be careful and basically just easing that through finger will do and what I'm doing now is pushing that back so that I can get my, my knife into there little V cut Take that off and push that down. So you see now, see now there's a bit of urine dripping out there, but that's going down onto the floor and not into the carcass. So you've got a perfectly clean pelvic area now. A little bit of the anus still there. I'll trim that out when I can get to it. I can't, it's a bit awkward to get to it with this. And now then, just to finish the growlick, it's so simple. Um, everything's going the right way now. You basically got the diaphragm skirt. So just using the knife to tease that around not nicking anything I put my fingers in to find the bottom of it and just come up similarly on the other side finger in around the back of my finger and up and basically that deer is now growling itself everything is going earthbound so there we have a nicely cleaned carcass very hygienically prepared you've got no mess in your in your the area that you're going to have to examine other than you in fact there's a Mediastinal lymph node looking at me there. Um, all draining down. I just extend that cut, take the head off, and then I can bring the uh, the the, uh, the offal, the, the growlick to one side, and I can finish my examination, checking the spleen, general condition of the carcass, heart, lungs, looking at the liver for the portal lymph node, and just work through it nice and systematically. Establish you've got a clean and healthy carcass, and then that's going into the raw sack and the cars over there. So that's what I call a good morning. And just as a footnote, um, 
the fox which came across in front of us that morning um, only lived until later that night because Rab, one of the guys, went out and uh, he got both the dog fox and a, a vixen of this year's retention. So actually two foxes were removed um, later on that same day. So I think we've got to say we've got a happy farmer. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you're not a member of Basque, you know the drill. Basque, looking after your sport, looking after you. This has been The Shooting Show.